as you can tell, I don't have my clarinet with me. Um, I was at Region this past week, this past, this past weekend, and um, I was going to and from our hotel and the school that we were practicing at, and as you guys know, this past weekend was really, 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 really cold. Um, it was like 5 degrees, like almost every day, or like 10 or below. It was really bad. It was really cold. Well, um, me being very stupid on taking care of my clarinet, um, it, okay. I had it in our hotel, which was, it was an okay temperature, about, about like 70 room temperature, you know. And then the trip from the hotel to the school is around 10 minutes. So the van was already cold whenever we got in the van. So my clarinet starts getting cold. Um, we're pretty much the first people to get there. Um, I get on stage and get out my clarinet and, you know, start playing. Um, because I really needed to work on a piece, on a section of the song that we were doing, and I was having a lot of difficulties, so I needed that extra practice. Morning rehearsal went on as planned. And then we get a lunch break. So I leave my clarinet at the school, which in the auditorium, it's actually pretty hot from where the lights are shining on the stage. And, um... After lunch, I come back, and I'm getting my clarinet out of the case, and I'm looking at my upper joint because I'm putting on my bell, my my barrel, onto my upper joint, and I see this weird shadow. I'm like, what is that? And I'm moving it, and there's a crack in my upper joint. Not all the way through, though, thankfully, but there. Um, I'll show you pictures of it. Um, it starts from the top of the upper joint below the cork. And it goes down through the register key. It goes through the little um, engraved spot where your register key spring thing uh, lies. And then it goes to the top of the F key. And I'm not for sure if it goes all the way through the F key. I didn't take that off, but I took off the register key so I could see. And um, whenever we got to the music store Saturday, I had to miss a bunch of rehearsal to get my clarinet to the shop because they weren't open at the times that I needed, so we had to get a hold of the actual guy and had him come in, come in an hour early to pick up my clarinet. But after we're looking at the split on the back end, I flip it over and there's a crack on the front as well, also at the top of the upper joint below the cork. And it's going through my protege emblem. It's, it's about, it's like, it's two cracks actually. One goes a little bit to the protege emblem and then the other one starts in the Protégé Emblem and goes down. And it almost reaches my A key, but it doesn't. Um, but I'm pretty confident in the guys that I left it with to fix it. Um, they're not really that many reputable uh, music stores in Kentucky, which is where I live. Um, so I feel like I left it in some good hands. They have a really good repairmen. And I trusted the guy that I was talking with. Um, but I'm actually on a loan E11 right now. I'm playing that and I'm actually going to be playing that for my district concert. Um, whenever I gave them my protege, it was Saturday morning and Saturday was the day of our concert. So I had to adjust my embouchure to an E11 again to do the concert. And a lot of people said that it didn't even sound like, like I changed instruments because I'm used to my E11 and I kept my mouthpiece that was in my protege. So, um, Nothing really changed. I had some solos and stuff, so it went pretty good actually. And um, I'm really happy with this loan that I'm on. I know they were trying to give me an R13, but the R13 was really bad that they were trying to give me the ring on the bottom of the barrel. On the bottom of the barrel, kept sliding off and like came off. And whenever I played it, it wouldn't respond at all. Like it was very horrid sounding whenever it did respond, and I was like, uh, I can't play on this. Um, he was going to give me a, a student model, and I was like, uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't play on that. Um, but I ended up getting the E11, and I'm getting it loaned for a week, or until my protege is fixed, because, um, next week after district, I am doing a college audition, and it's also, um, one of the university honors bands, which is what I'm doing, and I'm auditioning at that university, so I'll be doing that next week. Um, so I needed something to practice on this week. Because I don't have a backup. I sold my E11 to my cousin. And I'm, I'm really happy I sold it to her. Because she has definitely improved through her getting it. And she's just an 8th grader. But she's she's a really good player. Um, I don't regret selling it. 
but I do think it is it is a good idea to have a backup clarinet which I'm probably going to consider getting one and I'll probably end up getting an E11 hopefully like a like a cheaper one about the same price as I bought my first clarinet um, but I know uh, right now I'm looking into getting a new case for my clarinet um, I'm wanting to get one of the uh, buffet cases that like the vintages come in they're like whenever you open them up they look like leopard print but they're not um, those are really good and I'm wanting to get an Altari I don't know if I said that right it's like a bag that goes over the clarinet case that like keeps everything at the same temperature and like is very protective of it but both of them together are gonna be pretty pricey um, but I'm really hoping that I can get a better clarinet case because I feel like it might tie in to me having that Bakun case I don't I don't know if like it wasn't fit for keeping the coldness out or anything but I just want something that will be able to keep my clarinet at a steady temperature and not such a sudden temperature change that it cracks um, but anyways to go in further on how my clarinet cracked yes it was cold and whenever I played my clarinet the inside of the wood wanted to flex and um, expand like whenever you play a wood clarinet it, it expands and if the outside of the uh, wood is colder than the inside um, it's gonna pretty much be like an earthquake and the pressure is gonna build up and it's gonna crack but it might not happen as you're playing and like in my case it didn't happen whenever I was playing it happened after I put it up it's like the pressure was built up and built up and I don't know it just it <laughs> it just started cracking and it cracked for like I don't even know it might have a bigger crack in it now it's just cracking and uh, it really sucks because I bought that clarinet in August and I'm just really hoping that the repair technician can get it back to its normal state and hopefully it to be able to sound the way I got it. I really wouldn't want to go and buy a newer upper joint because I feel like an upper joint would be about like $700 and I don't have that for just an upper joint. I feel like I would be able to buy another Bakun off eBay for around that price. Um, but I really don't want to ditch this clarinet. I love it. It's got an awesome sound. I definitely recommend Bakun, but I'm just really upset it cracked. I don't feel like most Bakuns crack. I just feel like in this case I was stupid and I did something wrong and I'm never going to do it again. I'm always going to let my clarinet warm up. It's something you really need to think about whenever the weather's really cold outside, how your clarinet's going to adjust to coming outside to inside, wherever you are rehearsing, you have to let your clarinet warm up to that room temperature before you start playing, or at least close enough to that room temperature. I don't know how cold my clarinet was whenever I was playing it, I don't remember. I just, I always know the keys are cold, and um, that time whenever I came back from lunch, my clarinet was pretty warm, it felt pretty toasty, and I was like, maybe that cracked it. But then I got to thinking about it further, and you're tracking my steps, and I know that having it cold from me, from me bringing it to school that morning and then playing it was the cause of it. And I don't know if the, the major temperature change was any better anyway, so I feel like it was 80 degrees in that room because we practice on a stage and the lights are on that stage 24-7 well not 24-7 but you know the time that we're there but um yeah I'm pretty upset I don't know if you guys can see this but here is Skitom she is my baby Skitom say hi <laughs> say hi to them she doesn't like that um, okay but um, my advice to you guys is um, make sure that you watch your temperatures of where you're taking your clarinet make sure it's not somewhere too cold or somewhere too hot and make sure that it warms up to room temperature before you play it because it might cause something really bad to happen and then you'll be out of clarinet you might not have the backup that I have the going to a music store and having them loan it to you thank you guys for watching